Welcome to QuickBooks, how to receive payment. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. A couple things first. Hey, if this video is helpful to you, please like it and also subscribe to my channel. Help spread the word a little bit with some of these how-to videos that I put together on QuickBooks uh, if they're helpful for you. Second thing, hey, if you are ever in a position where you feel a little bit lost when you're trying to record something in QuickBooks, uh, you could feel a little bit embarrassed, you know, if you work for somebody and they ask you to do something, you don't know how to do it. So you go searching YouTube for these how-to videos. If you're ever in this position, check out the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. Uh, sometimes it really, really helps to have that support uh, so that somebody can help you record transactions correctly and help you understand the bigger picture of what you're doing so that you can record things correctly. That's what I do at the QuickBooks University. So take a second, check it out. It's qbuniversity.org and sign up for the masterclass. Uh, you definitely won't be disappointed. Okay, so here in QuickBooks, we're on the homepage, and this is how to receive payment in QuickBooks. And we are using QuickBooks Desktop, so that's what we're gonna go through today. Now, there's a couple of things that we have to go through first before you are ready to receive a payment in QuickBooks. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to go up to the Edit drop-down menu, and you wanna to go to Preferences right here. All right, so we'll see, you've got all these options here. Now, if there's anything that you ever wanna change in QuickBooks, uh, the, this is where you're gonna change it, under the Edit drop-down menu and Preferences. And this is gonna be kind of some defaults that you will set up within QuickBooks. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna to go to Payments, uh, and we are going to click on Company Preferences. You're gonna see all these different options here. And this is important to check out before you receive that first payment in QuickBooks because you need to know where it's going uh, because sometimes people will record a payment and they have no idea what happened to it in QuickBooks. All right, so if we look up here first, we're gonna see receive payments. You can automatically apply payments. What this means is that when you enter a payment amount for a customer for an invoice, it will automatically apply it to the invoices. You can check or uncheck that automatically calculate payments. So this is going to, uh, if you have uh, a payment, let's say that somebody has two invoices, one for a thousand, one for 2000, and somebody pays you $1,500, uh, QuickBooks will automatically just allocate it to those invoices. And then this last one, this is really, really important here. Use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account. Now, I've got other videos on my channel, and of course, in the masterclass at the QuickBooks University, we walk through this uh, step by step. But undeposited funds in QuickBooks basically means you get paid and it goes to this account on deposited funds. And then when you physically deposit that money, whether it's through you know a credit card, it takes a couple days, or if you get a check and you take it to the bank at the end of the week, uh, you would then, in QuickBooks, move it from undeposited funds to your checking account. So when you receive payment in here, when this default is checked, uh, it will automatically go to undeposited funds. Now, you can uncheck this, and it'll go to an account that you specify. All right, I always recommend that you put it into undeposited funds. That way, you don't overinflate your checking account or your bank account in QuickBooks, compared to what you actually have in the bank. That can help you avoid a lot of problems. All right, down here, uh, if you do sign up for online payments through QuickBooks, you can enable this and accept online credit cards and ACH. Uh, this does require a subscription and you have to process through into it. And then down here, do you wanna send payment reminders? These are more about payment reminders you're gonna to send to your customers and then also uh, to remind yourself that, hey, we've got some invoices overdue in the reminder section. You can have it set up so that, so in this example, every time you open it every day, it's gonna prompt you and say, uh, you have outstanding invoices that need to be paid. All right, so these are the defaults and you can change this, you can adjust it to whatever your liking is, but it's very, very important that you get this set up on the front end. Okay. Let me cancel this. All right, so you got a payment. You sent an invoice to a customer, you received a payment. It could come in credit card, Stripe, online, ACH, check, cash, whatever the case may be. You have to apply that payment to the invoice for that customer. All right, that way, 
it updates your what's called accounts receivable in your QuickBooks file of what people owe you. So you definitely want to make sure that you keep those updated. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Now, uh, QuickBooks has this great flow chart on the front end here, and you can see here uh, receive payments. You can also access all of this stuff plus more in all these drop down menus. Okay, so it does look a little bit overwhelming when you got all this up here plus this entire flow chart, uh, but they're both going to take you to the same place. And there's a couple more options up under these menus. Okay, so under the customers menu, you are going to see if we go down here to receive payments, you can click here or you can click here. So we're going to click this and it brings up a customer payment form. All right. Now this is only going to come up. Well, this form will always come up when you click that, but it's only going to show customers who owe you money and customers who owe you money means that you have given them an invoice. This is very different from a sales receipt in QuickBooks. This can get a little bit confusing, but just remember that a customer invoice that you send to somebody means they're going to pay you at a later date. And so this is when you're going to use this right here, customer payment, they have an invoice and they paid it. All right. So we're going to choose, we're going to drop this drop down box here and bear with me. I have to see who owes us money. All right. So Jennifer Fisher does not owe us money. Let's see, Ecker Designs. Okay. Ecker Designs owes us $1,468.30. And let's see, this is for an invoice 1130-2023, invoice number 1086. Now there's a couple different scenarios. So let's say they send a payment. And again, it can be a credit card, check, cash. You're just going to pick that up here. It can be e-check. You can add payment methods. Uh, it's pretty unlimited. If you choose credit card, it's going to ask you for the number and the expiration date. Now, if you do it through here and you don't have the service to automatically, you know, process this credit card, it is not going to process it through QuickBooks. You have to sign up for their service to process the credit card through QuickBooks. So that's very important. If you do not use their service, so if you use a third party, use a bank, whatever it is, uh, or an online bank, whatever, to process credit cards, you are going to have to physically process that credit card and then record it in QuickBooks. If you do have it processed through QuickBooks, you can enter the information here and it will process it for you. Uh, what I have found is that the QuickBooks processing fees are generally a little bit higher. And I think that they do that because of the simplicity of just doing it in one step versus two. All right. Over here, you're going to choose, let's say they sent a check. All right. So we're going to say if they pay this in full, 1468.30. Watch when I hit tab out of that, it's going to automatically place a check mark next to this because we had that preference set up that automatically applies it. So it applies it to this invoice. You can see payment amount 1468.30. The date was 12-15-2023. And we'll say the check number that you write in here is 56327. Okay, all good. You can see down here, it says amount due 1468.30 applied discounts and credits applied zero. You can save and close. You can save and new if you have multiple payments at this point. Very, very simple. Now, what if they paid less than the full amount? That happens quite a bit. So in that case, we're going to say, okay, well, let's say that they paid uh, a thousand. All right. Again, QuickBooks will automatically apply, apply that payment it's going to say the payment's $1,000. And what's going to happen in the background here is that QuickBooks is going to keep track of this extra $468.30. And so next time you go to receive payment, this customer still owes you this amount. So you would send them a statement saying, your, you know, your invoice was for $1,468.30. You got a payment for $1,000. You still owe us $468.30. So it's really, really simple. If they uh, pay less than what is owed, then it's just going to apply that amount and keep track of the extra. Now, what if they pay more? All right, this happens. Sometimes, you know, who knows, for whatever reason, they mistype something in their system and they end up paying a little bit more. So let's say that they pay 1568.30. You want to make sure that you record in this payment amount the full amount of the payment, regardless of what it is. 
So if they send you a million dollars for this invoice, you're going to type in a million dollars. All right. So let's say that they pay 15, 68, 30. They mistyped. They paid an extra hundred dollars. All right. So now this time what you're going to see is that it checks it here and it applies payment 14, 68, 30. But what happens is you're going to see this box down here show up that says overpayment a hundred dollars when finished. Do you want to leave the credit to be used later? And what that means is that it's going to place a credit on Ecker Design's account that can be used against a future invoice. In that situation, what we typically do is we will contact the customer and say, hey, you overpaid by $100. Do you want us to just credit your account so that on your next invoice, we apply it against that invoice? Or do you want us to send you a refund? And a lot of times, if it's an ongoing client that you're going to be doing a lot of work for, they're going to say, you know, just keep it as a credit on the account, and then you would just leave this checkbox. Now, if they want a refund, you're going to check this box, okay? So refund the amount to the customer. And this is important because I'm going to leave it like this so I can show you what happens. If you leave it at a credit and save and close, it's going to save it as a credit. So next time uh, they pay, you can apply that credit and... Uh, it'll reduce their invoice by $100. It's pretty straightforward. But in this case, if you have to refund the amount to the customer, I want to show you what happens here. So let's say, okay, we're done. We have recorded all our payments and we are going to hit save and close. All right. So you're going to see this where it says a refund is due to Ecker Designs. Refund amount $100 and issue this check via check, you can change this. So again, if you are processing credit cards through a third party, you have to physically use that third party to refund $100. And then you would choose, you know, whatever credit card and process it that way. If you are going to issue a check, which happens more often than not, you just want to make sure the date is there, the check number. If you are going to print the check from QuickBooks, you're going to check this box. If you are going to handwrite or pay online some other way, if you're going to do it by credit card, uncheck this box. You don't want it to go into the print queue. All right, so reference check number to print, to be printed. Ending balance is the checking account because that's the account that we're paying out of. If you do class tracking, you want to choose the class and then you can type in a memo. Um, overpayment for invoice XYZ, whatever it was, and you can click OK, and you're done. It's as simple as that. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Make sure that you keep track of this. So if you are sending invoices and customers are making payments, make sure that you record those payments. Uh, there's nothing that upsets a customer more when you send them a statement that shows an amount due that does not reflect payments they have made that will cause a phone call very, very quickly. So just make sure that you keep up with that. If you get the overpayment, you can do the credit, you can do the refund. If it's an underpayment, QuickBooks will automatically track that for you. Okay. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, again, head over to the QuickBooks University. This is one small little aspect of QuickBooks. And I like to help people understand the big picture. We've got over 4,000 members of the QuickBooks University. And I've answered questions, personal QuickBooks questions for just about every single one of those members. And I'm here to do that for you too. Head over there now, qbuniversity.org.